Brad, what's it like being back in Perth? <laughs> it's pretty exciting. I got in this morning. Um, been a bit of a whirlwind of emotion over the last couple of weeks, but um, to be back home after nine years uh, is a yeah, pretty good place to be. How do you find the back end of your time at Essendon and then guess making the decision now to come to Fremantle? Uh, it's been, it was, I guess it was a, not, wouldn't say a sudden decision, but it wasn't something that had, going into the per- trade period and uh, the back end, I was actually in hol- holidaying Hawaii with my girlfriend. So um, now sort of the dust has settled. Uh, there's that element of emotion, obviously leaving leaving a club that uh, has gone through a lot and we've been through a lot, particularly with the playing group and where they're transitioning into now. But um, to come home and have that support network of family and friends and uh, to come to a club uh, such as Fremantle in terms of the position that is it's in moving forward um, was something that was sort of too good to, to say no to. So you get a call out of the blue and then you get a call out of the blue while you're on holiday and then what's the process? Uh, not, not quite call out of the blue. Most of my manager was on the ground doing a lot of the work here and um, I was away sort of leaving that to him. Just wanted to enjoy my, my time away um, and then yeah, came back sort of the Tuesday night before trade uh, ended and uh, over the next 24, 48 hours, the decision um, came to one that it was. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm here now. So why did you leave? Because um, some would say Essendon will be the big improvement next year, probably might go top four or all the rest of it. Um, so was it a big call to, to walk away after all the nine years or whatever? Yeah, it was, it's, I think you spend a period of time anywhere. Um, it's a hard decision, particularly with the playing group, as I just said, to sort of to say goodbye to those guys. Um, but the decision was basically around there's an element of coming home to family and friends. The opportunity at Freeman, as Reese just touched on, with the group that it's in, the club, new facility, new stadium, um, contract security of three years, being an age of 27, <coughs> um, a multitude of things, um, and it was the right decision to be made. So that was sort of where I came to. Did you go on holidays expecting to be um, a part of a trade, Travis, or did it...? No, going away, I think you look at the nature of the trade period in general, it's something that... Um, guys getting traded when they're in contract, um, you know, with multiple years to go and um, leaving a lot of the decisions, I guess, to my manager while I was away. So um, until I sort of came back and was able to sort of sit down and really figure it out, um, I didn't really want to um, be thinking about any opportunities to be going because as I was going away, there wasn't and I wasn't planning on anything. So, Is it fair to say that if the Shield trade hadn't come off, you would still be... At Essendon? Uh, I'm not sure about the details in terms of how that was going. Um, I'd made a decision on that Wednesday uh, that I want, well, officially, yeah, that I wanted to, to go. So, um, yeah, I kind of just put my phone down and just left it to my manager and um, Essendon and Fremantle to get the deal sorted. Trev, where do you see yourself playing your best footy? You played some good footy on the wing and half forward during the time of the Bombers. Is it pretty similar here at Fredo? Yeah, I think it's something that on the back end of. Uh, the season just gone, sitting down in the interviews at Essendon and, and moving forward here now, the conversations I've had, I firmly believe my best football is still ahead of myself. I've obviously had a year off, a few injuries on the backside of those years. Um, and at the age that I'm at now, where my body is physically, I'm really ready um, to play consistent AFL football. Um, and the wing, wings, sort of small forward and inside midfield would be ideal sort of little progression for me. But um, I think there's just a fantastic opportunity for me to to challenge myself and push myself to that next level, being in nine years in the system, 87 games, it's sort of something that you sort of you push yourself now and you give it everything. You don't want to be walking out going, what if, um, if I had done this and I hadn't done that. Are there big improvements you can make? It's just about getting out in the park and getting that... Yeah, for me, for me I think it's just consistency and it's, it's playing week in, week out. It's putting my body in a position that will allow me to do that um, and I'm feeling really confident um, where I'm at. What was your major injury issue... Um, 2018? Uh, so last year I had a foot injury, I had a uh, toe injury which cost me, I was thinking it was in December, I didn't come back until halfway through the season so yeah. that was a bit more severe than what we first thought but uh, all good now. So that won't any right related to, like you had a stress fracture? No, completely separate, yeah, I just thought I'd even out the other foot so I had a <laughs> navicular on my left, uh, on my left foot in 2015 I think that was and then the sesamoid on my right foot. Um, yeah, back end of last year. Yeah, so you played the back end of the season, so you should be right for a full pre-season touch wood. Yeah, that? really, really confident, actually. Um, I think the positive, to probably to come out of that, was only played, I think, 11 games for the season. Um, and most of the time when you finish and you played a full year, you need those couple of weeks just to really rest and relax. And I was in a position where I was sort of halfway through my season in terms of the way my program went. So I was a couple of weeks off and got cracking back into it. So I'm 
you know, obviously the aim now is get through to Christmas and integrate into the group and then from there onwards it'll be just to just start <coughs> stepping it up and, and challenging myself. Has Ross said anything to you, Travis? Have you spoken to him about where you might play? And all that sort of yeah, we've had some com minimal conversations, um, but we had a chat sort of before about um, where he sees me on the wing running around, um, being a small player, but I've got a bit of speed, so I feel as if that's my game, and I think that's something that I can really offer Frio. Has there been much talk about who replaces Lockie Neal amongst you guys as to who goes in to the middle? And uh, well, I've only met a few of the guys today, so no, no, yeah, I wouldn't have a clue. Uh, first time at the facility today, yeah. <laughs> What's, how do you find the facility? Obviously, you, yeah, it's, you can. Yeah, fantastic. So, obviously, being at, when we were at, at Essendon, we had the new facility for the last three or four years now. And coming here, it's yeah, really, really impressive in terms of the way it's laid out, the space, the ovals. Um, yeah, can't, can't fault it. Have you heard from Fifey? Surely you've heard. <laughs> yeah, I heard from Fifey. We played at Claremont together. So, no, uh, no Fifey quite well. We're sort of texting um, briefly sort of throughout the day on that Wednesday and then uh, hopefully catching up with him this week. I think he was back in... Uh, back in the state of last week sometime. So I hope it'd be good to catch up with him and sort of, yeah, kick off from where we were back in Claremont in under-18s. Do, do you... oh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. No, he's going, he's, it's, it's fantastic to see, like, in terms of his development, watching from afar and, and being a friend from where he came from, you know, when he was 14, 15 years of age to now captaining a football club, Brownlow medalist, best and fairest, all Australian. It's impressive and it's something that's actually really exciting to to play with him, like, and just to see that development firsthand. And um, I know he's going to challenge me, I'm going to challenge him, and it's, yeah, it's a pretty good opportunity to come back and play with a good mate. Did you come through the 18s? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. yep. both at Claremont and then through the under-18s. You guys yep. won, didn't you? Yep. yep, yeah. So I think Brandon, Brandon Matera was in that team as well. I think Michael Walters, he was a year before, but had been in sort of the same sort of uh, age did, bracket. Did you guys think that Fife, he would be the one that would become the superstar out of what he played? Uh, I was always pretty confident on him, like seeing him develop. I remember he played a Colts game, so yeah, under 18s game against East from Man one day, and he, you sort of saw, look, saw that and just thought, wow. Um, and then to watch his development over from afar from these last eight, nine years has just been incredible. And um, he's probably one of the hardest workers, so I think that is a testament to, to what he's like, and he just, you know, he's a credit to what he's been able to do.